In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book, a reading of, uh, sorry, sorry, a reading from the book of Tobit. Anna sat watching the road by which her son was to come. When she saw him coming, she exclaimed to her father, to his father, Tobit, your son is coming, and the man who traveled with him. Raphael said to Tobiah before he reached his father, I am certain that his eyes will be opened. Smear the fish gall on them. This medicine will make the cataracts shrink and peel off from his eyes. Then your father will again be able to see the light of day. Then Anna ran up to her son, threw her arms around him, and said to him, Now that I have seen you again, son, I am ready to die. And she sobbed aloud. Tobit got up and stumbled out through the courtyard gate. Tobiah went up to him with the fish gall in his hand, and holding him firmly, blew into his eyes. Courage, Father, he said. Next he smeared the medicine on his eyes and made them smart. Then beginning at the corners of Tobit's eyes, Tobiah used both hands to peel off the cataracts. When Tobit saw his son, he threw his arms around him and wept. He exclaimed, I can see you, son, the light of my eyes. Then he said, Blessed be God and praised be his great name and blessed be all his angels. May his holy name be praised throughout all the ages, because it was he who scourged me, and it is he who has has had mercy on me. Behold, now see my son Tobiah. Then Tobit went back in, rejoicing and praising God with full voice for everything that had happened. Tobiah told his father, that the Lord God had granted him a successful journey, that he had brought back the money, and that he had married Raguel's daughter, Sarah, who would arrive shortly, for she was approaching the gate of Nineveh. Tobit and Anna rejoiced and went out to the gate of Nineveh. When the people of Nineveh saw Tobit walking along briskly, with no one leading him by the hand, they were amazed. Before them, all Tobit proclaimed how God had mercifully restored sight to his eyes. When Tobit reached Sarah, the wife of his son, Tobiah, he greeted her, Welcome, my daughter. Blessed be your God for bringing you to us, daughter. Blessed is your father, and blessed is my son, Tobiah, and blessed are you, daughter. 
Welcome to your home with blessing and joy. Come in, daughter. That day there was joy for all the Jews who lived in Nineveh. The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God while I live. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Praise the Lord. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, through all the generations. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was teaching in the temple area, he said, How do the scribes claim that the Christ is the son of David? David himself, inspired by the Holy Spirit, said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right until I place your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. So how is he his son? The great crowd heard this with delight. The Gospel of the Lord. As you know, just this past Saturday we had Dr. Scott Hahn speak in the morning on Saturday. And something that again just, his whole talk struck me, but the one part of how he said the importance of the lectionary that we read from, that post-Vatican II, this lectionary was designed by a whole group of people, and uh, there's so much more of the Old Testament placed within our daily readings, and since pre-Vatican II to now, the amount of scriptures that we read has increased 400%. That is incredible. So it's a beautiful gift. We're reading more from Scripture. We're being just inundated with God's Word. And one of the gifts that we have from this is today's reading. We've been reading from the book of Tobit from from the past couple of days. And this is an added gift, too, because the Protestant Bible does not have the book of Tobit. It's one of the books they took out. And if it is in the Protestant Bible, it's in the back as reference called the Apocrypha. Not inspired revelation, but it's within our Catholic Bible, inspired word of God. And I highly suggest that if you have the time to read the book of Tobit from cover to cover at some point, because you get to see the progression of the narrative in such a beautiful way, from uh, from how Tobit, you know, was was blinded to how they have the hope of Tobiah going out to receive his wife, 
and then all along the way the, the archangel Raphael is there with his healing presence and Tobiah comes back and then we see Tobit's healing today we see this beautiful progression so I highly encourage that you read from uh, the book of Tobit from cover to cover sometime but here's some of the themes that we pull out from Tobit is certainly number one healing Saint Raphael the archangel is featured very prominently within the book of Tobit and if you ever seen depictions of Saint Raphael oftentimes you'll see the angel equipped with a gourd like on his hip that to, to symbolize that healing and we know that our, the other archangels and what they symbolize Saint Michael the defender of God his very name means who is like God and then Gabriel the, the, the prime messenger of God and so we don't hear very much of Saint Raphael so it's beautiful to be able to focus on this archangel in the book of Tobit and I also find it very appropriate that this theme of healing within the book of Tobit also surrounds the theme of the sacrament of marriage. Just yesterday, we read from the, uh, from the part where Tobiah took his newly uh, wedded wife, Sarah, uh, Sarah who did not have the best of luck Right? She had seven, uh, seven husbands, all who have died on the marriage night, so she probably felt like she was cursed. But finally, Tobiah comes and he has this confidence from St. Raphael, healing from St. Raphael. And, the, and on the marriage night, he kneels down with his wife and he says, let's pray. And then he looks to God he looks to the uh, Genesis and says, uh, looks to Adam and Eve and said, Lord, you have created uh, man and woman to be together, to be one flesh. And then he says, you know, Lord, that I have not taken Sarah out of lust, but out of charity, out of love. And so we see a whole theme and the theology of the body a theology of the sacrament of marriage come out from the book of Tobit. And how important that is within our culture where the themes of marriage and the themes of sexuality have to have healing. We need to pray for healing within our own culture, within a very over-sexualized and over-pornified and over um, a hookup culture type of uh, culture where we see where we need to ask for healing and the the wisdom of the Holy Spirit and how he guided the author of the book of Tobit to place healing and marriage together and how important that is and certainly we pray for uh, we pray for couples who have a difficulty of conceiving we also pray for healing within marriages that are, are rocky as well and have difficulty and challenges. Pray for those who are divorced, those who are remarried. Certainly we need to ask for a lot of healing within our world today. But we see the wisdom of the Holy Spirit in guiding the, the words of the author of the book of Tobit here, placing healing and the sacrament of marriage together. And so we ask the Lord for that grace to be able to have the courage to pray. The courage to pray for holy marriages. We pray for the, all those uh, who we ask to pray for. We now stand and offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord, trusting in his merciful love that he will hear and answer our prayers. For the Church, as the mystical body of Christ, may she grow and prosper in the Lord's saving work. Let us pray to the Lord. For an end to persecution, discrimination, and bigotry in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. 
For those who suffer mental illness, may Jesus, the Divine Physician, be their help and their strength. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here, may God give us a spirit of joy for the gift of our faith and allow it to bear good fruit. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for our, the four deacons about to be ordained priests tomorrow. We pray for many blessings upon them in their ordination and also upon their ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray today for Jeannie Schultz, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, may they receive a place at the eternal banquet feast in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. We ask you to hear and answer our prayers according to your will. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins, and by his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, We sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, have heaven and earth your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Governed by your Spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Have a blessed day, everyone.